Good afternoon, and let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, July 4th, it is uh, the country, the United States of America's birthday today, so we wish our country a happy birthday. And our readings today are really poignant and pointed into that notion and sense of being prophetic, that notion and sense of that prophet's voice that keeps calling us to a life of holiness, a life of grace, a life of trusting in God. And more so than ever during this great time of challenge and difficulty in our lives, that prophetic voice seems to be drowning out by not only the sense of relativism and not only the sense of selfishness, but also just the sense that everything goes. And you know that through the prophetic witnesses of people who call us back to that change of heart, to trust in God, to follow his will and his direction in our life. All of our readings focus on that, that's that prophetic voice that seems to be lost because we are rebellious in our own hearts, in our own families, in our own, um, co in our own country and in the world. That we're rebellious against where is God? God doesn't exist, and so we decide to be our own gods. And unfortunately, where is that leading us to? It's leading us to hatred. It's leading us to anger, violence, even death. But what is great about this gift of prophetic voices is that it's a reminder for us that you and I are called by baptism to be that prophet in difficult times. And how do we be that prophet? While well, the psalm says, Your eye, our eyes are lifted, fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. And we are looking up to heaven for his guidance, but his guidance can be found in our hearts. All of us are baptized into the very life of Christ, into the very gift and blessing of his, his life from birth to his, to his ministry, to his passion, death, and resurrection. And as part of that journey, we're called to preach and teach, heal, save, and suffer. And part of that preaching, teaching, and healing, and saving is knowing the truth and listening to the inner voice of the Spirit in you and I that is giving us the opportunity to praise God, to thank God, to love God, to follow God. And when we love and follow God with hearts intent on serving Him, that prophetic nature of our life rings out. How does it ring out? It rings out in the way in which we first we have a relationship with God through the power of prayer, through the power of blessing and graces. Second way is through our desire to know the Lord, to love the Lord. How do we know the Lord? Through scripture, sure. Through prayer, sure. But really through our works, by looking for the goodness in others and focusing on that goodness in others. Does that mean that we should neglect the evil in the world? No, but we have to face it head on. We have to be prophetic in terms of with love, and that's the key, with love, sharing our, our wisdom with others. Love the sinner, hate the sin. What is the sin? The sin is turning away from God. In any way, manner, shape, or form, whatever it is in your life that is leading you away from God, we have to turn away from that. We have to come back to God. We have to rely on his mercy. We have to rely upon him um, for his grace to stir our hearts to a deeper, more prophetic love of him in thought and word and deed. And then finally, of course, is, is um, that whole notion that being prophetic means that we're going to be rejected. There's the suffering. You know, preaching, teaching, healing, saving, suffering is part of that, that trip of Munor of, of our Baptist as priest, prophet, and king. We're going to do that because that's what the Lord says is going to happen. But when we do that, and when we endure and persevere through that, in the end, we win. In the end, that prophetic voice that's within us, calling us to be prophet, calling us to be like Christ, calling us to love with heart, mind, body, and soul, becomes that grace and becomes the one that leads others to know Christ. Why? Because our life is that reflection of our baptismal promises in which we share in the prophetic ministry of Christ, preaching, teaching, healing, saving, and suffering. 
And we can only do that with the grace of a loving relationship with him, loving him and letting him love us. And then secondly, and, and more importantly, to trust that if we're suffering because we're doing right and doing good for the greater glory of God, then we keep doing that. Because suffering builds character and suffering builds that capacity for us to be prophetic by the way we live our life. No matter how much evil's in the world, no matter how many people reject us because we're old fashioned, we're a dinosaur, we're out of touch, the prophetic witness of our life as priest, prophet, and king lies in our capacity to love until it hurts and love even more, to proclaim the word of God in truth and in action, and to be that prophetic voice that challenges and calls others back to know the love and mercy of God. Let's fix our eyes on the Lord, asking for his mercy, and then see that the Lord is good, and that if we, as we seek refuge in him, he will lead us to draw others to know the love and peace and joy and hope and faith and grace of Christ in our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.